my guess is that some of that, like the district court litigation, would probably be stayed pending the Ninth Circuit's direct review because there's not a lot of reason to fight in the district court if the Ninth Circuit can take care of it. But I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, full employment for lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Are we waiting on more questions? But I think we have one more. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Shall I go? Okay. Yeah, yeah, first of all, uh, first of all, if you can't hear me real well, let me know. Uh, I have fluid in both my ears, and it affects both my perception of how loud I'm talking, and also affects my ability to, to hear you. So, you sound great. So yeah. Give, me the, give me the high side if you can, you can hear. You're okay. Uh, you know, I like to start out by reminding you know why the energy companies are in Oregon in the first place on the import side, and that's because California basically through the Coastal Commission. You know, shut it down. So they decided to come to Oregon. They thought Oregon would be an easier mark. I'm not sure that they feel that way now, but uh, you know, they certainly are making some some progress. Uh, you know, as 57% of this pipeline uh, goes through, the, I'm talking about the, the Southern Oregon, the Pacific Connector pipeline. 57% of that pipeline goes through private property. It has a huge impact on us as private landowners. Uh, and you know, we are really, really eternally grateful to coalition group, people out in the audience that are working very hard on this because landowners have the passion, they have, you know, they have the impact on their land and, land and properties, but in most cases, uh, they really don't know how to proceed, how to take on this very complicated process. There certainly, there certainly are some things that we can do uh, effectively. Uh, you know, eminent domain is an issue that resonates with the with the public. Uh, safety issues resonate with the uh, with the public. Uh, when we're talking to DEQ or the various state agencies, it really helps to have a landowner there uh, who can talk about it from the landowner perspective. You know, you know, this is this is our land that you're that you're reviewing. This impacts us directly, uh, and in terms of communication with newspapers and so forth and the media, uh, there's a lot of interest in having the landowner perspective. Now, that helps in getting attention, does it help with all these legal technical issues that are so, so important and that we rely on? Uh, no, but it can help create the energy around the, around the process, which incidentally, in the, you know, politically, uh, you know, I don't, we're fighting an uphill battle, personally, it's my view, and, and a lot of that is because of the economy, a lot of it is because you know, it's, it's an election year, but it's very hard for key politicians to take a position you know, against this pipeline uh, uh, and be cast as being anti-jobs anti in an election, an election year. And we're not hearing a lot from our senators, and we're not hearing a lot from, from uh, uh, from, from the governor. And that's not to say that they won't do some things behind the scenes, and that's why we need to continue to work on that. Uh, but, you know, it, it looks like we're not going to be able to get, get much in that, uh, that regard, and I, I think people would, would, would agree with that. Uh, you know, I happen to, uh, my wife and I happen to purchase retirement property uh, on the Rogue River in uh, this is a 2004. Photo of what? There's a photo of your property. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Actually, my house is right about here. Pipeline crossing goes right across here. Uh, we bought the property in 2004, and 2005, lo and behold, here comes this pipeline. <laughs> and it so happens that this peninsula is a perfect place to stage for a, uh, uh, for a horizontal directional drill under the, under the river, and what better place to do that on, the, on our property. Uh, so I get uh, you know, several months of, this thing goes through, several months of drilling, uh, then pulling the pipe uh, through, and in addition to the 95 foot uh, uh, right away that's uh, cleared, uh, a couple of more acres of the property completely cleared to make way for construction equipment and so on. Uh, in addition, I wind up living, uh, you know, we wind up living 200 feet from a uh, 1440 uh, psi uh, pipeline transmitting about a billion cubic feet of gas uh, per day. Pretty scary. And the safety issue is another one that really resonates you know, well with the, with the public. We happen to live in a rural area, and the pipeline, uh, the federal regulations on pipeline thickness are not uh, as stringent in rural areas. So because we happen to uh, live in a rural area, in effect, our life has less value from a, from a safety standpoint. So that's, a, that's, another, that's another issue here. Uh, 
So all these uh, <coughs> landowners, landowners are mad. Uh, you know, they, they have been for a long time. Early on, we had a, there was a meeting in Shady Cove that uh, a Pacific Connector put on an information meter, meeting. The landowners actually took over the meeting <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and ran, ran the meeting. It was a very, uh, very intense, tense meeting that got a fair bit of uh, media, media coverage. Uh, recently, uh, you know, the, in both the C uh, CCMA counties, the coastal zone counties, which is Douglas and, uh, and Coos, uh, on the import side, uh, we had been successful in getting the uh, uh, Pacific Connector to agree on a no export uh, clause. So now they have to go back and, uh, and change that. And we were almost successful a short while ago in. Uh, uh, and getting that stopped in, in Douglas County, the uh, Planning Commission voted three to three, which meant that it wasn't going to change. There was a seventh Planning Commission uh, member who uh, <coughs> who was not present, uh, so they brought in another, uh, they scheduled another meeting, and the vote uh, actually wound up changing five, five to two, but landowners were so angry that they actually had to call in the police to restore, restore order. So that gives you an idea of what the what the passion is, you have the same sort of passion in Coos Bay building this in a tsunami zone. So there's lots of passion. The question is, is how to channel that effectively. Uh, and, and again, since the, on the political side that's real tough, we're really relying on the folks on the folks here, the folks in the in the room. I'm getting my sign to stop talking here. No, yeah, one more. So we, want, we really want to get open this up to discussion on the on the technical issues or anything more we think we can do on the political side and have a good discussion there. Yeah. Thank you.